なあベックそろそろ取りに行こうかワンピースはい、皆さん、こんにちは。今日は、シャンクスの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの1ピースの So, if you want to be a pirate king like me and achieve eternal glory, go ahead and press the like button with all the power of your devil fruit. And if you're new here, my dear sailor, already subscribe to the channel and don't forget to activate the notifications bell so you don't miss any new video, okay? Then join this crew that will dominate the entire Grand Line and the New World. Now, without further ado, let's get to this epic video. And well, my dear pirate, It has been almost unanimously believed that Shanks is the person who is guiding Luffy to become the next Pirate King. Shanks clearly sees that Luffy has the same traits and mannerisms as the former Pirate King. This got to such an absurd point that many people started to believe, myself included, that, in fact, Shanks should already know all the secrets of the world. Probably Roger revealed that to him, and because he had that knowledge, Shanks literally chose Luffy for become the new liberator of peoples, that is, the new Joy Boy. I myself already made a whole video talking about how Shanks may have chosen Luffy intentionally and everything we saw at the beginning of the anime and manga is actually all prepared by Shanks because it is clear that Red Haired incites Luffy to become a pirate, he even hands over his arm to prove he trusts the boy. So when I started seeing these theories about Shanks actually being the real One Piece villain, I started to question if this was really possible, yes I know, they're just theories. But as simple as the theory is, if it doesn't make any sense worth analyzing it, after all, many theories end up becoming reality, so why not do the same with this theory? And well, for starters, there really isn't an official theory about this. I've seen several that start from several different principles, so I put together everything I saw and created something based on that to see if that way I can arrive at a more grounded theory about the possibility of Shanks to be or not to be a villain. And basically speaking, Shanks would not necessarily be a villain. But a real pirate, just like Blackbeard. I always like to remember about this detail. In the One Piece world, we have the world government and the authorities as the enemies, while the pirates are the characters who, at least, are what we can call passive people. They are not good, but they are not bad either. One Piece has a very anarchist worldview, at times, even revolutionary and communist. But in general, it is an anarchist story where the state and institutions are managed by old suits and rich and powerful people. Far from any political value, I'm not here to judge what's right or wrong within that universe, but if we take piracy in real life and compare it to One Piece, things are completely different. Real life pirates were extremely violent and plundered and killed whoever they were, so they were indeed considered public enemies. Even if we use Robin Hood's parable to make a false equivalence, it would still be unfair. Because in theory, pirates had no shame, they stole from the richest to the poorest. But in One Piece, it's different. The pirates, at least in their vast majority, are not looters, looters, and bloodthirsty murderers. In their vast majority, they are just a bunch of young people who don't want to be part of any government and want to be free to do what they want. And since the sea has no owner, well, this would be the perfect place to be free. Of course, it's not as if in our history the state and the authorities had never committed absurd crimes, even more so at a time when information was very well controlled and less fortunate people were completely left to suffer. One Piece wants to show all this, but in a more fanciful and satirical way, at the same time he does it from the point of view of the pirates, and because of this we tend to see the pirates as the good guys, while the navy and the government world as the real enemies. That's why I always like to remember that Blackbeard is not truly a villain. He's just going after his dreams the way he found it. He commits many crimes, is a fact. But Luffy and his gang are, as well as the government Mundial and the Gorosei, also act in an unscrupulous way. And if Blackbeard is not truly a villain, by logic, not even if Shanks wanted to, he could be a villain too. But it is undeniable that one way or another he is acting for some benefit of his own. And this is where the whole story begins. The theory is that Roger chose Shanks to guide the next Pirate King. So far, so good. But Roger's initial idea was that his son, Ace, would be that persona, and that's why he left him with Garp, because he knew that even if Garp was in the Navy, he was still a good and worthy person to take care of his son. 
So the initial idea was that Shanks would assume responsibility for Ace until he became self-sufficient to assume the mantle of King of the Pirates, of course, to help in this journey Ace should eat the most powerful devil fruit in the world and Shanks should find it and hand it over to Roger's son so he can fulfill his role. But something different happened, even though he was with Garp, Ace was born with an adventurous spirit and of course, he is also one of the D's so he had all this load attached to him with Garp doing everything so that the boy did not become a pirate. Ace influenced Sabo and Luffy and being a little older, he already had a lot of wisdom about the world, unlike Sabo and Luffy who even following in Ace's footsteps were still very young and could be molded differently, Shanks realized that and decided Ace could not become the next pirate king and liberator of the peoples. After all, he was Roger's son and his fame and power would grow a lot to the point of not being able to be controlled when necessary, but with Luffy it was different. The young man was still very naive and so it was easier to manipulate and mold him. Him at will and that's exactly what Shanks did. With Luffy practically becoming a clone of Shanks, even more so for receiving the straw hat, now all that was left was to leave the boy in the world to evolve, but whenever it was necessary Shanks would appear to find out what was going on. Of course Ace couldn't be discarded, so much so that Shanks tried to warn Whitebeard about the danger Blackbeard brought and since Ace going to face him was an act of enormous stupidity, Ace still had some use for Shanks, having someone divert the vision of the world, even more so for being Roger's son, while Luffy was becoming more and more powerful was the perfect plan. But Ace died and the whole world turned to Luffy. Now everyone knew about the existence of the Son of Dragon and how dangerous he was to the world government. It was then that Shanks had a brilliant idea, he decided to go to Gorosei to talk about a certain someone, and when Kaido was defeated by Luffy and the world government sent Admiral Aramaki, Shanks promptly made it clear that Luffy was his protected by easily defeating the Admiral using his hockey. Shanks proved to the world that this was the new Joy Boy, and that he was on his side, so with Shanks would he be a villain? Well, it was exactly in this chapter that Shanks revealed that it was time to go get One Piece. Think with me. If Shanks is guiding Luffy to be the next liberator of peoples and the next pirate king, and he knows that for Luffy to become all that, he will need to reach the last island and find One Piece, because then Shanks wants One Piece to yes? What is Shanks really up to? Well, the answer is very simple. Shanks is in fact using Luffy to break the balance of the world and defeat the world government, Many say that for Shanks to do that he just wanted to, but the truth is completely different. Shanks is powerful, but not enough to defeat all the most powerful pirates in the world and the world government at the same time, he is not a D and would not have what it takes to become the next Joy Boy, so no ate the devil's fruit himself, which we later learned was a Hito Hito no Mi model, Nika. Ace could be that person, but he chose Luffy because he can mold him to his advantage and now Luffy is doing what Shanks couldn't do. He is literally clearing the entire world of all possible opponents that Shanks could have in order to fulfill his objective without having the danger of Luffy turning against him. And if we stop to look, this is really happening, if Shanks wanted he could end everything alone, after all he is very powerful, isn't he? So why doesn't he do it? Why didn't he defeat Kaido himself? Why didn't he go and challenge the world government himself? Because he can't. The idea that Shanks is a celestial dragon, a noble, has been gaining a lot of traction lately, and this theory could explain why Shanks wants to end the world government so badly, Shanks' mother could have been killed by the nobles or else Shanks could have been abandoned by his parents or even being sold and that made him angry about his past. Shanks would be the type of person who knows everything, has contact with the government and has even belonged to the government, but he wants the end of it for everything that happened to him in the past. In other words, Shanks wants to break the balance of the world and using Luffy for that is perfect. In a past video I mentioned how Shanks was actually using Luffy Luffy to do the hard work while he used more of the dialogue and political part of this confrontation, and thinking about it that way it really makes sense, as Luffy cuts his way through taking down all possible enemies, Shanks is behind just waiting for the right moment to reveal itself. What does Shanks want with One Piece? What is One Piece? Does he already know? Has he ever been there? Well, it looks like yes, he's already on Elbaf with the giants to further strengthen his army. But for what? What is the ultimate goal? Just break the wheel, the cycle? The government? Does he want revenge? Or just power? Well, we don't know what it is, and seeing the world now with the world government's eyes, it's clear that they're not completely wrong. Something happened in the past that needs to be hidden, we don't know what it is, but that could be what Shanks wants for himself. What if it is the source of inexhaustible power? The source of power even greater than the ancient weapons? What if it brings about the destruction of the world? What if it's the ceiling of a mystical being who created the devil fruits? What if Joy Boy was actually the real enemy? 
Or did Joy Boying never really exist? Does the world really need to know the truth? Could Shanks be opening this Pandora's box knowing all these risks? And there's more! What will happen when Luffy finds out he's been used? Finding out that Shanks really just wanted to use his powers for his own will? Would they face each other? Could it be that after so long believing and admiring Shanks as a true hero, Luffy would be able to kill him? But now I want to know your opinion about everything we commented here today. Do you think this theory that Shanks is a villain and will be Luffy's last challenge makes any sense? Is Shanks plotting to become the most powerful pirate in the world? What is Shanks' true goal in One Piece? But of course, if you made it this far it's because you like the content, so it doesn't hurt to subscribe to our channel and become one more member of our fleet, my dear sailor. And of course, do not forget to press the like button that helps a lot in spreading the video and the channel, so help us to become the largest fleet of pirates here on YouTube, okay? A big hug for everyone, and until the next video.